Hi guys, welcome back to the day 21 of learning Unreal Engine. As you guys requested uh, that you need to learn how to do collision in uh, uh, Unreal Engine with the help of Chaos Cloth. So I am creating this video uh, on how to how to collide your cloth with uh, the objects, not just simple object, but complex meshes as well as you can see on the screen. So let's start now. Now the process is really easy guys. Uh, if you are new to the channel, just subscribe to the channel and watch the last video of Chaos Cloth. You will get the idea that how Chaos Cloth works because in this I am going to show you some advanced step that you can use for the collision setup here. So let's just start. I want a cloth uh, should uh, I want a cloth that should collide with this object here. Okay, like like a table cloth. So let's just create that now. I'm going to go to content drawer here and let's just create a new folder or let's just create a mesh first. So I'm going to go to as usual to the modeling and I'm going to create a rectangle here. So if you remember from my last lecture, I have done this as well. So I just want to place above here something like this. Okay. And one more thing I'm going to do by default, if you see that this is set to 100, 100, 1 and 1, but I want to make sure that it is um, somewhat big. So my value was 700 by 700. So let me just do that value here as well. Okay. So let's just do 700 here. So let me just type 700. Okay. For some weird reason, it is not working. My keyboard is not working. Just give me a second guys. Yeah. So 700 by 700 and I want some really good subdivision because I want some uh, wrinkles in my cloth as well. So you can adjust as per your requirement. Okay. So let's just do 100 by 100 here. And let's just accept it here. So as soon as you do it, you can see we have this mesh here, which is going to work as a cloth for this object. And if you want, you can remesh it as well. So if you remember, we go to mesh and we just do a remesh here. So if you want to do that, you can do that as well. But I'm not going to do for this, uh, uh, this project. But if you want, you can do that as well. Okay. So now what I want as usual, if you remember, we need to convert this to our uh, skeletal mesh. So let's just go to our folder and find this where it is located. So here it is and let's just rename it first. So let's just right click and rename and let's just name it to cloth. Okay. Uh, or table cloth if you want to be specific here. So let's just name it to table underscore cloth. Let's just right click. And let's just convert this to skeletal mesh and just click on convert and it will take like 5 to 10 seconds to convert it to skeletal mesh. Once it would be done, you will see here. Okay, so let it just um, be ready. And now you can see we have this two mesh, skeletal mesh and skeleton. And if you remember, we need to go to skeleton mesh here. And as soon as you open it, uh, we are going to just dock it here. You can say it's here. So as you remember, we, what we need to do, we need to right click and let me just show you the segments as well. So if I go to wireframe, you can see there are lots of segments here. So let's just go to lit again. Let's just right click and create clothing data from selection and let's just click on create. And if you remember again, we need to right click and apply clothing data and let's just apply it. And now we need to paint this out. So if you remember from the last chaos tutorial, what we did, we just painted the half because we want a flag. So if you want to do that and you want to collide it with your mesh that you have created for the flag, you can do that as well. But I'm going to approach a different method this time because I want it to fall on the table, the whole cloth. So I'm going to paint the whole cloth here. So let's just uh, click on this table cloth. Let's just activate the activate cloth paint. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to paint this out. And it will be fully black and white because I don't want anything here which should be uh, deactive. Okay. So this is done. Let's just click on the deactivate cloth paint. And if you have done it correctly, the cloth should be moving downwards. Okay. So let's just check this out. Yeah, my cloth is moving downwards, but you can see it has stopped here. Okay. Now what I want, I want it to go more downwards. So always remember if you want to do that and your object is really far from your cloth, what you need to do, you need to do certain changes. So let me just do that as well. So what I'm going to do, I am going to just uh, uh, save this out or let's just close this again before saying saving. So let's just save this out. And I'm again going to go to activate cloth paint, but this time instead of tool settings in paint value 100, you can take it up to 1000. So it keeps on falling downwards until it hits the collider mesh. So let's just do this again. 
so i just i'm going to paint it out here okay and if you want to do the reverse thing you can do that as well so just make sure that the paint value is set to zero and if i now paint you can see we are getting this result here okay so basically it's telling that this is now a black total black okay so now what i can do i can just take this value from 0 to 1000 now i'm going to paint it okay so let's just paint it here something like this like this okay like this shows just make sure that all the parts are covered nothing is remained here okay and now if you have done it correctly it should go more downwards so let's just check it out and you need to do this in order to do that so now you can see our cloth is going 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 and at certain point it has been stuck here okay so not an issue let's just save this out let's just check it out here okay so let's just go to our cloth here and now we need to delete this out if you remember and we need to add our skeletal mesh so let's just do something like this here and let's just do something like this here okay i am right now into my camera so i can see what i'm working on okay and let's just click on simulate here and as soon as i do it you can say it's skipping on going 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 and going so it is not colliding right now now let me show you one thing guys before uh doing anything here so if i go to my perspective you can see i have this backdrop here okay and i have this object so this uh, backdrop is also having a collision and this is also having a collision so what will happen let me show you so now in order to collide with all the objects just select the cloth search here for cloth okay and here you need to enable two things collide with environment and force collision update and as soon as i do it you will see one thing see if i click on simulate you can see the cloth is going and now it is falling down now why this is happening okay uh, this is the uh, thing that i found out really late because i was experimenting a lot with this because in other videos and tutorials they show how you can do it on the simple spear okay but i don't want to show you i want to show you guys how you can actually work with this in your real projects so i want to show you that so let's just stop and now why this is happening let me show you that as well so let me just delete this first okay this uh, backdrop and let me just play it again so now you can say it's working perfectly so what's the reason behind this so there is a reason what is that so let me just uh, click here by uh, getting that back and here if i search for collision you can see here the collision preset is turned to block all so it's blocking all the objects but i don't want anything to affect this basically our stage here so what i'm going to do i'm going to do no collision here and now let's just check again and now if you see it's working perfectly now what i want i want this to be the my collision object so what you need to do you need to click on this object just double click it here now there are two types of collision by default what you can do you can go to collision and add a box simplify collision but what will happen no let me show you but before doing that once this is done just scroll downwards here as well and here you will find one more option in the collision which is customize collision before that you will find collision complexity just click here and do one thing which is your use simple collision as complex so what this will do basically this will work as your simple collision but it will show a complex mesh so let me just save it okay let's just play it here so let's just click here and play it again simulate it again now you can say it's working really good but the only problem is that my uh, shape is circle and i'm getting a square here okay so this is the problem now let me just uh, hide this object or let me just move the cloth here okay and if i take a spear no it is going to work perfectly because this uh, basic shapes here the cylinder spear cube cone okay they all are having the collision so in other videos they show you how you can work with this but let me show you what happens here so if i just resize this bigger and if i click on play here again to the simulate you can see it's working beautiful okay but here it is not working that great so what is the solution so let me show you that as well so let's just go here again but this time i'm going to click on this object double click it i am going to remove this collision here so what i'm going to do i'm going to go to collision delete selected collision or remove collision which i'm going to do and now click on collision again 
and just do a auto convex collision. So what it is going to do, it is going to create a basic shape here. So if I click on apply, you can see we have created this basic shape. Now by default values are really great, but if you want it to be more perfect, you can just increase it and click on apply and it is going to improve. Okay. So just you increase this, all the settings here, and this is going to improve a lot here. So if I click on save, okay. And if I go again here, let me just close this. And if I go again here and if I click on play again, and now you can see it's working really good, but you can see there is some bounce effect and all that stuff. Now let's just apply our default values and check what we are getting. Okay. So now you can see this is looking really beautiful here. So I'm also going to show you how you can create this to a static mesh actor. Don't worry about that as well. But let me just stop the simulation and simulate it again for you guys. So now you can see this is working good. Okay. There is some like a bounce effect, but don't worry. It's a... Uh, it's just a normal thing. Don't worry about uh, it at all. So now you can see this is looking nice. Now, if you want to improve the quality, you can do that of the simulation as well. Just click or double click here. Just click your clothing data. And if you scroll downwards here, you will find a cloth config. So if I hold the shift key and open the first step here, you can see we have this density here. So how much density dense your cloth is, you can, uh, how much stiffness should it be? And there is a really good guide on Epic uh, where you can study how you can use all of this stuff here. Okay. So I'm not going to touch it here because it's a really complicated thing. Uh, I'm going to shift click open the cl uh, chaos cloth shared config and here you can increase the iteration. So let me just do maybe seven. Okay. And this is going to affect your FPS. So make sure that you save all the stuff here and you always save this all as well. And now if I click on play and now you can see this is really better now and we are getting this stuff here, which is looking really good. Okay. And this is looking nice. And if you want, you can increase the subdivisions as well. So let me just do maybe three. Okay. And let me just save it again. Always save your file because uh, it can crash anytime. Okay. So let's just click on play again. And now you can see there is lot of bounce here. So you can decrease that bounce as well. You can decrease the drag as well. There are lots of stuff that you can do. Okay. But let me just uh, go downwards here and let's just do maybe one only, but I'm going to increase my max iterations to 20. Okay. And let's just save because I want some more detail here and let's just click on simulate again. Yeah. Now this is better. Okay. Now let's say you are liking this result and you want to convert this to a static mesh. It's really easy. Okay. Just make sure that you are playing this level because if you stop it and you convert, this is going to be the result. Okay. So let's just click on simulate and you can cache this as well in the sequencer. Now, if you want to learn about the caching of the uh, caching of the chaos cloth in sequencer and rendering out, do let me know. I will create one more video for that. But right now, let's just click on simulate and let's say you're liking this result. So what you need to do, you need to select your object, go to actor and let's just make sure that you convert uh, your skeletal mesh to a static mesh. Okay. I'm going to create a new folder here. Let's just name it to static mesh cloth and let's just name it to table cloth. Okay. And let's just click on save here. And this is done and you can see we have this and now what you need to do, you need to drag it here. Okay. Into your scene and you can use that as well. So let's just you uh, drag it here. Okay. I'm going to stop this and you can see there are lots of error because we need to delete this. Now we need to save all the stuff and now you can drag it here. Okay. Something like this. And now you can see the pivot point is off here. So what you can do, you can go again to the modeling. And you can go to the X form and you can just make sure that you uh, align your pivot. So edit pivot and you can do a center pivot and just click on accept. And let's just move it downwards, something like this. And you can see this is looking nice and you can really play with this. So you can see this is looking really good and don't worry about this because it's not a two sided material. You are seeing this gaps, but you can really fill this out. So let's just quickly create a material and let me show you. So just double click it here. 
okay uh, it will say that you must edit a material so let's just create a new material here so i'm going to go to content and i have created a new material so let me just or you can apply a fabric material as well so let's just apply a fabric material let's just go to cotton uh, i'm going to apply a simple cotton material maybe this one okay and i'm just going to drag and drop it now you can see this is looking nice uh, maybe not this one maybe a simple fine material okay yeah this is looking good but what i want i want maybe this one uh i'm not sure guys so you can really play with all this stuff maybe yeah this one okay so what i can do i can do the tiling and all that stuff as well so let's just double click on the material instance and i'm just going to do the uv tiling here okay maybe something like this and let's just save this out and now what i want uh yeah this is looking nice but you can see this is having this transparent result so it's really easy to fix just go to your material go to your parent material and just make sure in your parent material you have this two sided option on and let's just click on save here okay and once you do it if you go to your main result so let me just close this material and now you can see we have this mesh which is inside as well okay so this is really looking really good let's just go to our maybe cine camera actor yeah this is looking much much better and what you can do you can select this and smooth this out as well okay so what you can do you can subdivide this mesh so you can go to a uh, mesh and you can do a remesh as well okay or if you want you can go to your where it is yeah yeah in deform you can just smooth this out as well okay so there are lots of options if you go to maybe where it is it was somewhere over here just a second guys let me just find it out yeah it is smooth only so if you click on smooth now you can see the result is really smooth out so let this is without smooth and this is with smooth and you can do a uh, maybe smoothing result steps also okay how much smooth you want so maybe something like this okay and maybe yeah something like this this is looking nice and you can do that as well or what you can do you can do a remesh as well okay so if you want to do go to mesh and you can do a remesh okay and you can do a smoothing group and all that stuff or what you can do if you cancel it again and you can do what we say a simplify as well okay so you can do that as well if you want to reduce the polygon count and there are lots of stuff that you can work with this okay so you can do the displacement as well and you can create a displacement material as well so there are lots of things that you can do there was also a subdivision option which you can use as well so yeah there are lots of stuff that you can do here you can do the uvs as well so if you want that you want to maybe regenerate the uvs you can do that as well okay so i hope you guys enjoy this video and learn how you can create basically cloth simulations and colliders in unreal engine with the help of chaos cloth okay um let me know in the comments as well if you want to cover some other topics or you want to learn some other topics i will make sure to create that video it would it will take some time but i will make sure that i create that video for you guys okay so i will see you next time till then if you haven't subscribed to my channel please subscribe to my channel if you are new to unreal engine share this videos to the friends as well so they can also learn unreal engine and i will see you next time till then take care guys bye bye